Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. We've got a ton of stuff to go over. Let's just get into it. So first of all, uh, it looks like there's a little bit of pump going on. I didn't really recognize that until I was uh, just checking out Tom Crown, friend of the show, Tom Crown's uh, channel. And he looks like uh, Bitcoin's having quite a bit of a run. And it's at 71,467, almost 72. And uh, I don't know exactly what's going on. I know there's a lot of uh, shorts that are, might be getting liquidated at a specific point. So watch that. Maybe we hit an all-time high today. Pretty crazy. However, I will remind everybody that this market sometimes is a little nuts and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Case in point, the largest gainers of the last 24 hours, Celsius Network up 58.4% and uh, something called beer coin. So just take it with a grain of salt. What's going to happen? Nobody really knows, but let's just jump into it. Gary. So Gary Gensler, head of the SEC, hopefully not for long, was on CNBC, and he said a lot of couple of interesting things. First of all, uh, we're going to talk about the ETF. Maybe there's a potential delay uh, for Ethereum. Not surprising, and I hope it actually does, because that means that I can accumulate more Ethereum and a lot of different things that are going on behind the scenes. But what he talks about here in the very beginning points and what he talks about is disclosures and the things that are being done. He actually talks about it in the second part. And the first part, you're going to hear um, the greatest investor of all time, Jim Cramer. And he's going to talk to us about what we should be getting into as far as an ETF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the screen real quick. I want to make sure that you can actually hear this perfectly by bringing this up in the audio section. Let's take a listen to friend of the show, Gary Gensler, and why you don't understand what you are doing. Here we go. Okay. Now, uh, Polkadot, Cordana, Cosmos, Immutable, Ronin, Bonk, Osmosis, Sushi Swap, My Neighbor Alice have all traded millions. I'm talking about millions of dollars this very morning. Now, do we, should we have a Sushi Swap, a, 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 maybe an ETF? It, or the proprietary kind of said, I would think that Bonk is a natural and osmosis. These are trading million Gary, these are millions of dollars these things are trading. Shouldn't we have it shouldn't so, we have me, some sort of product? Let me let me say something. Okay, first of all, you got to appreciate Jim Kramer here, even though he's made call wrong call after wrong call after wrong call. And of course, there's another thing called inverse Jim Kramer. Essentially, do the exact opposite of what he's doing. He's essentially placating to the traditional finance group as there as he's listing off some of the most ridiculous names that are out there. Yes, we get it. Yes, that's what it is. But I got to tell you, you know, a lot of these things, not besides Bonk, some of these things are actually on Ethereum, and maybe there could be an ETF uh, coming forth. But that's not why we're here for. We're here to t listen to Gary. Tell us just exactly how long wrong we are. Take a listen. Think more broadly about the crypto markets. Right now, without prejudging anyone, these tokens, whether they're the ones Jim listed or other tokens, have not given you the disclosures that you not only need to make your investment decisions, but also that are required by the law. It's a basic concept in our securities market. We, the SEC, tomorrow are turning 90. Happy birthday, SEC, 90. And what President Roosevelt did is he created this commission to oversee that you, the investors, get disclosure. And in the crypto markets, they aren't giving you that disclosure. And secondly, that exchanges, like, like here, this floor of the New York Stock Exchange, get properly regulated to protect against fraud and manipulation, and they don't trade against you. And these crypto exchanges, Jim, are doing things we would never allow this New York Stock Exchange to do. Our oh, you cannot protect yourself. Gary needs to be there for you. He is the one that can protect you, and he's going to protect you harder. So let's just break that down real quick about what Gary talked about. So first of all, he talks about disclosures. We really need these disclosures. And of course, the different centralized exchanges that have, have gone in, they've tried to work with him and he just kind of like boots him or he gives them a Wells notice saying he's going to sue the pants off him. <laughs> That's how the SEC works. But with, with disclosures, I don't know about you, but when I've gone into Robinhood or I've actually dabbled in equities or stocks, as people call them, uh, the disclosures are there, but I don't pretty much skim right over them. And of course, if you're getting into uh, really heavy into equities or you're an early investor, sure, I get it. But uh, is that going to really protect everybody? Not so fast. And then the next piece, as far as he talks about, you know, we would never allow this for these centralized exchanges. You already allowed it. It was called FTX. You missed your opportunity. That's why you're going to get booted. So we take a look at these things that are going and, and Gary is trying to do a good job 
God bless him. He's just incompetent. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I don't really want to get too negative because it is what it is. And, you know, good for Gary trying to do his job and maybe angling for another position. I really don't care. But let's move on, shall we? So as far as like ETFs going, everybody was excited about the Ethereum ETF, myself included. But I was like, maybe I didn't buy enough, which is what I'm always thinking as time goes on. I don't know about you. Drop this in the comment section if you believe that. Yes, Rob, I have bought plenty of crypto and I am uh, sitting very pretty and I will never need to buy anything else again, especially before this parabolic bull run. If that's you, I'd like to hear that in the comments. But on that same show, Gary, and I didn't have that piece, uh, he went about and said, hey, as far as next steps on ETH, ETF approvals, it will take some time. So I want to tear it. She says, hey, the next step will take some time, indicating a potential slow walk of the S1 approval process. And the S1 is essentially the bulk of what the ETFs are, and it has everything to do with how things work, the function of them, how things are going to go in and out. So yeah, it looks like they may slow walk them. People were believing that it might be June, maybe July. But again, if this is something that you, if you're a believer in like Ethereum, maybe some other altcoins, maybe you're thinking to yourself, this might not be a bad thing. So on this one, I support Gary. Take your time, look over it. I like that. But I will tell you that with this, when this ETF goes, you know, I think it'll be just like how we have with Bitcoin. Bitcoin in the first ETF, of course, in January, usually what happens is Grayscale does its dumping. That's going to happen. We're going to see some negative flows, but then it takes off. And this is a reminder. Did you know that the Bitcoin ETF is the fastest one to hit $20 billion in assets and the closest one, Jeppy, and it took 985 days. I bet, of course, that's BlackRock only took a whopping 137 days to hit $20 billion. So if this doesn't salivate or help people for the institutions get into it, I think there may be something around the bend. Having said all that, I think it would have done a heck of a lot better if they would have allowed staking, but that is not allowed with Ethereum. I think that was the big push for institutional investors, but I still think they'll get behind it. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And now let's move on to a little macro. Surprise, rate cuts. And uh, this is from uh, Radar. Uh, follow them on X, I'll link in the description. Uh, world events in real time, I like that. So the Bank of Canada just cut interest rates by a quarter. And just so you know, uh, there was a 25 basis points cut and rates went from 5% to 4.75%, which doesn't seem like a lot, and it really isn't. But what it indicates is that things went a little bit too heavy and usually when they start to do rate cuts, either they have accomplished their mission <laughs> or there's something wrong with the economy itself. So we'll see what, of course, the Fed will do. The next meeting will be 12th of June, 2024. The current uh, rate right now is 525 to 550. And there is a 99.7% chance that they will not cut. And there's a 0.3% that they will. But when they start to cut, you know what that means. Again, either they hit their objective or the economy is slowing down. And when that rate cut starts to happen, all of a sudden now there's talk about not quantitative tightening, but quantitative easing. And here in America, we sure do like to print money. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll see how it all works out. Now let's move from macro to politics. Everybody's least favorite subject, but this is actually a good thing. Ted Cruz who is a senator of my the former state I used to live in in Texas. Now I'm in Puerto Rico. Great place. You should visit. Fantastic people. Great food. Roads. Eh, something desired. But anyhow, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz just bought three Bitcoin miners. And he's a Bitcoin miner now. He said they're hashing today in Iran, Texas. There's an Iran, Texas. He says, I'm proud to join the ranks of Texas Bitcoin. This was a couple of days ago, just, just crossed my desk and I have to salute him. I mean, good job. If you're looking to see which party is really behind uh, Bitcoin digital assets, I think you have no farther to look than Ted Cruz and his party. That doesn't mean that they're all bad, but I'm just saying. And then also, also talking about politics, I just thought this was interesting. Donald Trump, and I hear everybody groaning right now, but did you know 
that Donald Trump, this is his, his wallet. It's being tracked by Arkham. I'm going to link that on. I got to link that in the chat so you can follow his wallet and see if he dumps on you or not. And I'll put that in the description as well. I just put that in the live chat. I'll put it in the description. You can always track this. What was interesting to me is that he's got almost 30 million, 28 million, 714,000. And I thought it was just a bunch of Ethereum because of those trading cards. But if you look at his portfolio archive, he's only got 1.8 million. His second biggest holding is Trump, which just sounds about par for the course, 7.82. But his number one holding is a meme coin called Trog at 16.55 million. And this is all trash, all of this stuff. Look at this. Like I said, he, I mean, they're meme coins. And as my friend Steven says, you know, we're in a meme coin super cycle. I think he might actually be right. But look at this. He was holding this from 2022 at a price of 503,000. And he didn't do anything with it. He just held these goofy meme coins. And as time has gone on, he is now at, oh my God, he was at 8.5 million at one point just for holding meme coins. 5.6 million. So, hold on, that's not right. Let me send that over. Oh, yeah, May 17th. Holy smokes. So, yeah, that's one from 5 million to 28 million, 714,000. So, hats off to that guy. Uh, good for him for just holding on and doing absolutely nothing. And this is probably why some of your altcoins aren't pumping. And we talked about this yesterday. Trying to do a secondary live stream, just couldn't. Couldn't do it yesterday. Too much stuff going on. A report, 455,000 tokens, mostly meme coins, were launched on Solana in May. And it's not just Solana. 177,000 tokens were launched on Base, which of course is the layer two platform uh, for Ethereum launched by Coinbase. Optimism and Arbitrum saw under 20,000 new tokens created. So if you're thinking to yourself, why are all my altcoins pumping? Probably because everybody's getting the meme coins. And that's that for that piece. So let me know you think about that. And then um, also, as far as like altcoins go, I want to give a shout out to a guy from Coin Bureau by bringing this to my attention yesterday. I just want to do a, a follow-up. People were asking me about this. There is going to be a merger. And we talked about this about a month ago or so, maybe two months ago. Singularity.net. Singularity Net, Ocean Protocol, and uh, Fetch AI. They're all merging together. The merge will begin on June 11th. Today it is June 5th, so you got some time. And it will end on June 13th with Fetch being swapped to this new token, ASI, at one to one. AJAX will, will, will be swapped to this new token, AGI, at a one, one to 0 0.43. And Ocean will also be swapped at AGI at 1 to 0 0.43. So to get the very specifics on it, I just went to their official web or official X account and they said the exact same thing. Mark your calendars, June 13th, because AJAX tokens are migrating to ASI. Largest open source decentralized network. Please stay tuned for updates on our official channels. Beware of spot websites and social media accounts. So I don't know how this works out for the centralized exchanges or if you have to hold in a specialized uh, wallet, I would assume they would actually have talked to the centralized exchanges, but I don't know anything. But I will follow this and I will make sure that everybody knows also because I own a couple of those tokens. So I'd like to be informed myself. So that sounds good. Also, as far as altcoins go, hats off to World Mobile Token. It's been a long time. Mickey Watkins and the crew. And they have partnered up with da -da -da, Quintus. Quintus is integrating with World Mobile Decentralized Network, offering US mobile users cost-efficient global roaming and connectivity at 12 times less than legacy networks. Crazy. Uh, this drives the seamless integration of fintech, mobile telecommunications, and real estate. That's crazy. For the unbanked and underbanked Hispanic demographic, proudly announced today that there was a letter of intent with World Mobile Group. So if you'd like to find out more about what World Mobile is and how it's actually working, just do a search, Digital Asset News and World Mobile. Uh, we've done like four or five different videos. Uh, me and Mickey have actually sat down. Also on top of that, I would like to remind you that uh, World Mobile has a nice little partnership going on with a new project as far as I call it to the D-pin of Kingpin or the Kingpin of D-pin uh, called Minutes. 
And that was, we did a video on that uh, over on Dan Degen. There's a link in the description. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be pretty damn big. And that is headed up by Mickey Watkins' brother, Josh Watkins. So uh, things are happening in the telecommunication space, so don't get left behind. And finally, Coinbase. Uh, they're going to put out a smart wallet. I don't know if you guys have used the Coinbase wallet. I have it. I don't really get into it. But apparently, there's this new one that they're going to do, smart wallets. And this is supposed to be rolled out. Simple and easy to integrate, easy access to Coinbase balances. You can onboard it with a pass key. You don't need a uh, passphrase. And it's a gasless, ex gasless experience, probably because they're going to use base. So this is what it is. Uh, Coinbase has designed this new smart wallet. It's not out yet that I know of. They've designed this new smart wallet with the idea of making the onboarding experience easier. Easier. I got to applaud them because it's a pain in the A sometimes to really deal with wallets, especially with the uh, passphrase. Now, we know we can do it. It's not a big deal, but we want a big tent, right? We want as many people to get up, get into crypto. And unfortunately, people are lazy and they have the attention span of goldfish. So they need to make it super simple for the dumbed down population. And that's fine. I have no problems with that. People got things to do. You got, you know, two jobs and 10 kids. Gotcha. So the company, Coinbase, said the new users can now create a wallet with Face ID, Google Chrome profile, fingerprint, or YubiKey without a recovery process or phrases. That sounds good for half of it. And I'm going to tell you why the other part could be a problem. Coinbase wallet supports eight networks, base, Ethereum, Optimism, Arbitrum, Polygon, which makes sense, right? I mean, because they're built on Ethereum, so why wouldn't they do that? But this was interesting. Avalanche, which could potentially be a cross-chain and uh, Ethereum compatible. Binance chain and Zora. I don't even know what Zora is. The company said it plans to add more. We'll see how it works out. But this would be a great idea for chain abstraction, doing things in the wallet and not having to pick a specific chain and just getting things done. I don't care what it is, however they make that, that'll be a big winner. But this last piece here, I just got to delve into this real quick. This sounds awesome, right? Face ID. That sounds pretty cool. I mean, I use it all the time on my phone, right? Google Chrome profile. Eh. Fingerprint, I like that the best. YubiKey without recovery phrases. No, I don't. YubiKey, I know some people love it, but I'm not a big fan. I'm not going to say why. I'm just not a big fan. I don't use it. But this whole thing about the face ID, as a reminder, just a couple of days ago, this happened to an OKX user. What they did, somebody got their personal information, and when they actually went in to recover their account, the scammers, they said, yeah, send us... You need to send us a video of you and your face holding up a newspaper and uh, dictating about what the actual date is with the, the, the current time, or actually write on a piece of paper. And they did that with a deep fake, an AI. And uh, that, to me, scares the hell out of me. So again, you can do this, but there's ways around it. The fingerprint, I like that part. But the other stuff, I'm not so sure. So that's it for today. So look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to me talk about his time sensitive.